a main contributor to the distinctions and understanding that you have a right has been also to pursue the subtleness that you have seen in your observations. Like the subtleness yes. of changing the worm for a paper. Yes, all, all that. But, but, uh, but uh, I was letting appear. Then, when speaking with Jimena later, I was like, yeah, what I was doing is to let appear. So you were loving your work as a scientist. Exactly. I have a friend, Sammy Frank, that wanted to work with me. And eventually one day I asked him, why? Why do you want to work with me? And he said, because I want to learn how do you think. Well, why do you want to learn how do I think? Because you may meet somebody that you do not know that um, is a scientist in a different domain than what is your. And after a little while, you begin to understand this person and even understand the domain of reflections in which is, he is. And I say, my goodness, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, I realized that I was letting appear. I let this person speak without thinking that I understood or knew whatever, and, and he was showing me what he was thinking. I just was letting appear. Huh? So then I was like, yes, of course, if you do not let appear, the thing doesn't appear. But not that it is in this way independent of you. There is a history, which is beginning now, and this short history or has a very long uh, period of, of occurring because you study the same profession or, or different profession uh, for experiment, but there is a history of transformation together. If there is not such a history and you do not let it occur, you will not understand. Another question that appears to me is that, for example, uh, throughout our lives, many times we have uh, the opportunity to study and understand in that moment different things. Like, for example, I remember when I read the book, uh, A Brief History of Time, that I remember that I, I understood many of the things that were mentioned there uh, by Hawkins, but afterwards, I kind of forget what is it that I understood. However, when I talk to you, I see that there is, there is no that forgetting, that it kind of the understanding that you get sticks with you. And if not, you figure it out once again. Exactly. But why do you think that happens? Well, that happens when you respect that uh, author. <laughs> You're reading Hawkins and you respect uh, Hawkins and uh, you have no opinion about him, so that he's a good science. There you are open. And then you flow with the, what he says, and you understand the coherences of his understanding, of his expressions. And you forget the details, but you discover the coherences, the configurations that he is looking at. So in order to understand something, we must look for the coherences and the regularities in exactly. what we see. Because what we did see is configurations of relations, not particular things. Yeah. So you listen and then you discover the way he's talking. And this did exactly the same thing I did. Well, let it appear. Right. And, you, and the book you read and, and you say, ah, you were, we're living together eh, with the uh, audience. Mm. And transforming and, it. And, and, and about this, another question that pops into my mind is, where do you see the distinction or the difference between what we refer to as understanding and what we refer to as comprehension? Well, uh, it's interesting this word up because they have different origin. Understanding has to do to stand 
with the other and looking at it from standing with it. Comprehension is to see the relations in which this uh, makes sense. So the, the difference is subtle. It refers to, in, in Spanish, entender y comprender. Comprender, entender es ver la naturaleza de aquello. To understand is to, to see the nature of the coherences of the thing that you're observing. And comprender, the comprehension, please you see more the connectivity. Uh, and depends on how you think, both things but do something similar and different. Show the locality and the relation. In one you see more the locality, in the other you see also more the relation. Mm. And for example, the, the word uh, in Spanish, which will be aprender, which in English would be to learn, it relates to what happens to me in relation to that. Yeah, but in Spanish, it, how do I capture that? Aprender, mm. how do I capture that? Mm. It leads you in a different way to the reflections. Mm. Eventually, it's not easy to translate sometimes because they are evoking different emotional dimensions. Mm.